Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus and welcome to Bible in a Year. This is a daily reading plan that you can find on the YouVersion Bible app that is going to take you through the entire Bible from cover to cover, from beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation in this year 2020. We are on day 114 and uh, we just left out of the book of Deuteronomy and we're now in the book of Joshua, finishing up with the book of Luke and transitioning back and forth between the book of Psalms and Proverbs. And this, this reading plan, it's powerful. This uh, endeavor right here to read the Bible in a year is powerful. Not just to say, oh yeah, I read the whole Bible. No, but the idea of hiding the entire counsel of God in our hearts is powerful. Knowing what the Bible says in itself is powerful because we as believers, we hold a spiritual jurisdiction. When Adam sinned on the earth, Satan became the God of this world. Satan took the authority that God gave to Adam. He took the dominion and he enslaved man through sin and Satan became the ruler of this earth. Man was intended to rule over the earth by God, but he lost that position when he disobeyed the commandment of God in the garden. So Satan has ruled. It wasn't until Jesus came and died on the cross and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. He overthrew the rule of the devil and restored man to his rightful place as ruler over this earth realm. Now, when the enemy moves and when the enemy does something, he does it illegally in a sense. He doesn't have the power. He doesn't have the authority to do that. But just like when there is no law around, no law enforcement around, criminals can do whatever they want. It isn't until the law is enforced and prosecution happens that the law begins to take effect. And in the same sense, we also are spiritual law enforcement officers. As ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven, this is what we're supposed to be doing. So when the enemy comes tampering around, we have the authority and the power to step in. But if we don't know the law, which is the word of God, if we don't know what we have right to do and what we have right not to do or what the enemy cannot do, then how can we enforce the spiritual laws of God? We can't. This is why knowing the word of God is of utmost importance. Jesus used the word of God when he dealt with the enemy during his temptation in the wilderness. It was the word of God. There was no argument. There was no debating. He simply said, this is what the scripture says. It is written. He presented the law. And the enemy cannot contend with that. So, if this is your first time checking out a video, Bible in a Year, I just want to encourage you to join the journey for the remainder of the year. Make a commitment, because it'll take a commitment, because reading the Bible every day is going to bless you. Now, since we're on day 114, you can either start here pick up from day 114 and move forward with us. Or if you want to, if you have the mind and the determination to do so, you can go back to the beginning and double up until you catch up. Read day one and day 115. Read day two and day 116. However you wish to do it, I just want to encourage you to get started and participate. So having said that, let's go into the book of Psalms. We are still in the 50th chapter. And I found a verse here that I'd like to talk about. It is Psalms chapter 50, verse 23. Now, I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible, but you can feel free to follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you're comfortable with. And the Bible says, Whoso offereth praise 
glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I shew the salvation of God. The Bible says, whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. I've often wondered in my younger days, like what, how do I really praise God? How do I genuinely praise God? How do I glorify God? Like I want to bring glory. Jesus, when he was talking to his disciples in John chapter 15, he said that we should abide in him and he in us so that we can bear much fruit. He said that when we bear a lot of fruit, that this brings the Father glory. So I've all wondered, man, God likes to be glorified. I want to glorify God. How can I glorify God and know that I'm doing it and have confidence that I'm intentionally glorifying God? Well, this verse right here speaks to that. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And I began to think about that. Oftentimes as babes, we pick up the mannerisms of those around us because they are our example, whether it's a good example or a not so good example, it happens. You can tell your kids whatever you want and instruct them, they're gonna most likely do what you tell them to do. Because by nature, we are emotional beings more so than rational beings. I wish that it were different. Even now, when we try to exercise our rational minds, our emotions have the capacity to really get the best of us in moments that we might not want them to. And we end up saying something that we regret, or we end up not saying something that we really feel like we should have. So what can I do to praise God? Well, the very first thing that I learned is to say, I praise you. And this is how you say, oh God, I praise you. I worship you. I magnify you. And we learn little phrases like that. <laughs> but God, God began to deal with me and I began to realize like, hey, am I really doing what I'm saying by saying it? Like, Am I praising God by saying, I praise you? I'm just explaining what I'm doing. And I began to think about it. And I realized, you know, praising God is, it's more than just saying, I praise you. It's more than just saying, I worship you. It's more than that. Praising God has to do with relating to God who he is and what he's done for you. For example, if God has somehow delivered me from an addiction, then praising God would look like this. Father, I was in bondage and you set me free. Your power came and broke the chains over my life. I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I was miserable. I was sitting in darkness and I tried to break it on my own and I didn't have the strength had it not been for you, had you not come along and torn asunder these chains and lifted me out of that place, I don't know where I would be. My life is better because you did that. I feel stronger. I feel freer. I'm able to do things that I wasn't able to do before because of what you've done. That is praise. That glorifies God. I mean, think about it. How would you like it? What if somebody came to you and said, I praise you? Hey, man, I praise you. And you're like, <laughs> okay. Like, after a while, you might take on this attitude and say, hey, listen, beat it. <laughs> Get out of here. Scram. <laughs> but if somebody comes to you and says, man, I, I saw the way, let's say you're playing basketball. Man, I saw the way that you took that shot, yo. And I mean, against all odds, you shook your opponent and they were totally confused. And then you dropped back and you sunk that basket. That was phenomenal. Great job. That hits differently, doesn't it? Or ladies, what about, what about if you're cooking and uh, 
you're cooking something, you put a lot of effort into it, you've been on Pinterest <laughs> or Instagram or whatever, wherever it is that you get your secrets from that you want to try out. You went to the grocery store searching for exotic spices. You had to fight the maid, the lady in the next aisle trying to get the same thing. You overcame some obstacles. I'm painting a picture. And you come home and you're experimenting. You didn't get it right the first time. You're working on it. You're trying to tweak it and you messed it up. Now you had to start over. And through much labor and trial and tribulation, you finally got it to where you think it should be. And then you present it to your husband and you're expecting feedback. You, you, he knows like, hey, she's trying something new and he says, it's good. It's good. Maybe you were expecting a little more, maybe a little detail, a little more insight, but like, great job, babe. All right. Thank you. But consider if he comes at you like this and be like, oh man, babe, that flavor, how did you do that? I can taste this ingredient with the garlic and it, it, it's like balanced, like it's, it's music in my mouth almost. It, like, man, this is awesome. How did you get, what if he starts coming at you like this? It hits different, doesn't it? See, there's levels to the game. I can say, hey, great job. You did well, you cooked good. That's shallow. That doesn't sound like high praise. But if I tell you, man, I appreciate that you went all over looking for these ingredients. I know that these are not very easy to find. And this is something that you're learning for the first time. I saw that you had to scram like the first two uh, batches that you made, but you hung in there and man, this came out good. It's hitting. I like it. It complements the spices blend. I love the flavor. The texture is pretty good. That hits differently. Well, if we were made in God's image, then it's the same way with God when we praise him. If, if you are in a weak place and finally you decide, man, I'm, you know what? I'm, I've had it. I'm going to go and pray. And you pray and you begin to talk to God and suddenly your anxiety is flushed away and there's a peace. And suddenly doubt begins to recede and confidence begins to emerge that, you know what? I think I'm going to be all right. And your spirit begins to rise up in you. And there's this umph and energy that you receive all from the presence of God. And instead of saying, thank you, Jesus, what if you said, Father, you know what, man? I felt down. I didn't know what I was going to do. I don't know why I waited so long. You were there waiting for me because you had the answer. You came and you strengthened me. I feel uplifted. I feel confident. I can move forward and really expect victory. It hits differently. Well, if it hits differently for you, it wouldn't be far-fetched to imagine that it hits God differently, seeing that God has a heart just like we do. Why wouldn't it work similarly? So when the Bible says, whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, especially if you say that in front of people, it's one thing to say that to praise somebody one-on-one, -on -one, but you get up in front of a room full of people and you say, listen, my man right here, I just, I would, I just want to brag on him a little bit. I just want to express he was working hard today. Like I saw him. I know his ankle hurts. I know that he he didn't sleep a lot last night, but he was persevering and he did a great job doing that. I appreciate his effort. I know that he could have been at home chilling, but he chose to come out here. Man, you know what, bro? I appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. I know you didn't have to do that. You were selfless in your act. You stepped out of your way to be a blessing to me. You benefited me. You helped me. I wasn't able to do it on my own. And because of you, I was able to complete this task. And I'm saying this in front of all these people. I have honored him. And that man now has glory because of what I said. And it hits differently than if I were to say, man, you know, I just want to say thank you, brother, for helping me. Okay, little bit of glory. But if I magnify that, 
then I magnify the glory behind it. And in the same way with God, God, let's go down memory lane. Father, I remember when I used to smoke weed. I remember when I used to stay out all night drinking and snorting coke and doing all kinds of drugs and hanging out with all kinds of people. I remember fantasizing about criminal activity, daydreaming about being the big boss and doing mob uh, style stuff and getting in trouble. I was wasting my life. And then you came and you changed my mind. You started showing me some different things. I started seeing what life was really about and it changed something in me. You started teaching me how to walk right. You picked me up when I fell. You were there. You gave me good advice. Your words were words of life. They were words of truth. They did something to me that made me want to do the right thing. And every time I've come into your presence, you've surrounded me. You've loved me. You've never failed me. What if we start glorifying God? He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. What if you begin to magnify God and as you magnify God, he gets bigger and bigger. Let's say you're in your bedroom and you're magnifying God. Your unsaved spouse is in the living room and God begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger until his presence explodes out of your room into the living room where your unsaved spouse is and they begin to be surrounded by the glory of God because you took the time to praise God and glorify him. Now they're immersed in his glory and they come into the bedroom weeping saying, I don't understand what's happening or what I feel, but I feel this love and I just want to cry. And you recognize the Holy Ghost and you come and lay hands on them. And immediately the spirit of God comes upon them and they start speaking in tongues as God fills them with his spirit. What if that were to happen all because we really glorify God. Maybe it won't happen the first time or the second time. Maybe it takes a little while, but can you imagine the kind of portal you would open up from heaven into your life by just simply glorifying God? You see, one of the benefits of doing that is that as you begin to take a closer look at God and you take a closer look at what he's done in your life, well, I know that we have two pairs of eyes, but how many of you can look at two different things at the same time, one with each eye? You can look at that thing over there with the right eye and then look at that thing over here with the left eye at the same time. Probably very, very rare because the two eyes work together. When you look at something, it's both eyes looking at the same thing, offering a slightly different perspective for a more rounded view of what you're looking at. So if you take your two eyes and you stop looking at how much it hurts in your life and you stop looking at how much discomfort you're in right now, if you take your two eyes and you, you take them off of the fact that you got three bills there you can't pay and you begin to put them on God and remember, Lord, I remember last year when I lost my job and I couldn't pay my bills and I didn't know where the money was going to come from. I had applied to different jobs and been rejected. I was down. I was at the bottom. I didn't know how I was going to make it. And suddenly you came through for me. You begin to forget and lose focus on the negative that's in your life. And you begin to magnify the good. When you look back and pour yourself over all of the times that God's been there, it boosts you. It lifts you out of that slump of negativity and darkness and it enables you to begin to praise God and focus on him. Because when you begin to magnify God, when you begin to glorify God, when you begin to praise him and offer up thanksgiving, then the power of God is released into your life. And it goes directly to the place where you need it. Instead of focusing your eyes on your issue, 
Instead of focusing your eyes on your problem, instead of focusing your eyes on where it hurts and spending all this time and energy trying to fix the pain, trying to pacify the pressure, if you're trying to get a hold of something that helps you escape when all along God wants to be your escape and he's desiring, hey, listen, get your eyes off your problem and look at me. I am your God and your salvation. I am the one that's going to save you. Remember Peter, when he stepped out in faith to come where Jesus was, but the boisterous wind and the rough waves got his attention and he looked away from the master and began to focus on his circumstance and fear began to fill his heart. So much so that he began to be consumed literally consumed by his situation. He began to drown in what took his attention. And how many times do we as believers do the same thing? We drown in the very problem that we're trying to get out of because we took our eyes off of Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The power of magnifying God, the power of giving God glory by praising him. Because when we begin to praise God, we are engaged in a selfless act. It's selfless to praise God. It is selfish to gawk at your problems. Did you know that it's selfish for you to gawk at your problems and worry about them? Because it's a thing of the self. Self is all in that. You got yourself all in your problems and you're looking at it and it's all about self. Oh, woe is me. This this is happening and that's happening. But if you step out of self-ishness and step into selflessness, then you're going to be less consumed with the things that had your attention while you were selfish than when you are selfless. You see, there is less of yourself in your problem and you've placed yourself in God where he wants you to be from the get go. Because he said in John chapter 15, abide in me and I in you. Jesus isn't against us escaping our calamities. He's not against us escaping trouble. He's not against us escaping and seeking refuge. What God desires is for us to make the name of the Lord his strong tower, to make the name of the Lord his pla- our place of refuge. God, God doesn't want us to go to a Snickers bar at 9 p.m. at nighttime when we feel bad. We've had a bad day and we go to a Snickers bar seeking comfort from the pleasure that it offers us as we indulge in it. God is saying, what about me? I can do you a lot better than that Snickers. There are pleasures at my right hand. If you delight yourself in my presence... There is fullness of joy, not just a superficial happy, not just a carnal, biologically empowered happy, but a deep sense of satisfaction that we call joy, a hopeful expectancy and satisfaction with the way things are exactly as they are. Joy is a means of escaping the influence of the negative voices that come from the problems and issues in our life. Jesus said this about joy. He prayed for his disciples that my joy might remain in them, that they might be filled with joy. I want to retain joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Mm, There's a song we used to sing. When the praises go up, 
the glory comes down. Where sin used to dwell, grace now abounds. There's healing and hope and love all around. When the praises go up, the glory comes down. He is a God of great glory. And when we praise him and he begins to fill our being with himself, we are filled with the glory of God. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I perceive the will of the Holy Ghost for this video. And I want to thank you for tuning in. I pray that this blessed you. Let me know if this connected with you. Let me know that if, if this helps you, it encourages me. It lets me know, you know what? I was in the vein. I feel like I am. But the confirmation always feels good. May the Lord bless you all and keep you all. May he make his face to shine upon you all. May he be gracious to all of you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.